Hi, with Senator Chuck Grassley. Welcome, sir, for your Hi. time today and a good morning to you. You. Um, you don't love it. Uh, will you vote for it? Yes, I'm going to vote for it. I had meetings last week during our Senate recess in Iowa in 13 different counties. And in those 13 counties, Iowans are fed up with uh, uh, the partisanship in Washington. They're fed up with talk about possible default uh, of debt because we've never done that. And they want the government to run in a business-like way, just like these small businesses and uh, people that come to my town meetings have to run their families or their small business. So we can't shut down the government. There's a lot in this bill that's very good. Uh, there's some that's not so good, but it is a compromise. And when Republicans have just control of one out of three branches of the political branches of government, uh, uh, you got to expect some compromise. And nobody's going to be 100 percent satisfied with every uh, compromise you get. And just think how bad it would have been if the Democrats controlled the House of Representatives. Uh, we'd be spending uh, trillions more than what we're going to be spending over the next two years uh, with this agreement. May I ask you to assess the leadership skills of Kevin McCarthy? You've been on the Hill for a long time. He's new to the speakership. How do you think he's done? Well, I think the numbers speak for themselves better than anything I can be. Who's going to argue with a 300-plus vote for this bill and 100 plus against it. Uh, that speaks better than anything Chuck Grassley can say about Kevin McCarthy's leadership. Uh, he's proven himself to be a leader. All right. Oh, well, that would be an endorsement. Mm -hmm. Next topic. You talked to the FBI director of Christopher Wray on the phone yesterday, right? Uh, and you're trying to get a look at this document. Uh, from what I understand, he says you're okay to come to the bureau and look at it. Uh, is well, that the case, and is that good enough for you? Well, it's not good enough for me. We asked for the document a month ago. It's been subpoenaed. He ought to respond to a subpoena. We're doing the constitutional job of oversight. I have read that document. If he would read it, and it's a non-classified document, he admits it exists, and we aren't interested in uh, whether or not the accusations against Vice President Biden are accurate or not. We're in, responsible for making sure the FBI does its job, and uh, that's what we want to know. Okay, Senator, let and, me stop uh, you there. You, you just said you read the document. Is that right? Yes. Then what did it say? Well, I'm not going to characterize it. We're going to make it public when, when they get it delivered to us. But if he would read it, he would know that all the excuses that he's giving us, uh, that he wants to protect uh, uh, sources, and that's important to protect sources, but that's not an issue with this document the way I read it, and he ought to uh, come forth. Uh, they, they've got to produce this document. You know, they're up against what the Durham report has said about the shortcomings and the political bias of the FBI. And this is just one more example of them not being forthcoming to the public because the public's business ought to be public. And uh, there's no reason for a non-classified document to be held in secret. Senator, how damning is this document to the sitting U.S. president? Well, it's... Uh, I, I, I don't know that. And but that's you, what we but need But you've to read it. I read it. Uh, let's put it this way. There's accusations in it, but uh, that's uh, it's not for me to make a judgment about whether these accusations are accurate or not. It's up to my job to make sure the FBI is doing their job. And uh, th that's what this is all about as far as I'm concerned. Uh, public's business ought to be public. James Comey, the former FBI director, did an interview yesterday. He really thinks that the Republicans, and I think he's including you in this, is out to get the FBI. Listen to him here. It's really unfortunate. The notion that the FBI is some sort of leftist cabal out to get the Republicans is so crazy. It just shows you how crazy our times are. The FBI will be fine in the long run. This fever around Donald Trump in the MAGA world will eventually break, but it's become somehow a nutty article of faith that the FBI is out to get Republicans. Your reaction, sir? 
We are not out to get the FBI. We're out to change the culture of the FBI at headquarters. Uh, the people that are at the grassroots in Iowa and throughout this country doing their job investigating crime, uh, we have no complaints with them. We have complaints with the fact that there was political bias with the uh, uh, emails of Hillary. We have political bias in the uh, uh, hurricane uh, uh, investigation that went on. We have political bias that's been proven by the Durham report. And uh, the FBI has to straighten out their house, get it in order, and he's trying to tell us that, it, that he's made changes since he's been there. Maybe he's made some changes, but he hasn't made enough changes. And just a recent information I got from whistleblowers maybe six months ago uh, with a, T, a guy by the name of Tebow using political bias in starting an investigation against Trump, stopping an investigation against Hunter. That guy's no longer with the FBI. I talked to Ray about it. So Ray is willing to take some action to make some changes when he uh, took Tebow off of that investigation job that he had. And, uh, and he needs to do more and producing this unclassified document that he admits exists uh, just turn it over to us and honor the subpoena, honor the constitutional responsibility of Congress. Uh, he's given information, either leaked or directly given, uh, of uh, classified documents and maybe even exposing the name of a confidential source to the New York Times. Well, he's treating Congress like second-class citizens compared to the New York Times, and it's just not right. It's unconstitutional, his actions. Wow. Sounds like there's uh, more work to be done. Senator, please come back. Thank you for your time. I'll, Thank you. I'll, I'll be with you anytime. Thank Goodbye. You. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.